Hi, thank you for tuning in to A Little Crazy Art. What I want to show you today is the um, encaustic monotype hot box, uh, which I have right here. It's homemade, and I just wanted to let you know what's on the inside, because I know a lot of people were asking. The aluminum plate is anodized aluminum. It's hot, so I'm going to pull it off so you can see what's inside. Okay, so on the inside, what we have, um, what we have right here, is four light. These are all things you can get at Home Depot. Four light fixtures that are, um, if you can still get them that are not plastic, that's great. But you can see back here, they are fixtures that you would probably have in your basement. This is house insulation. And this is just tin foil from the kitchen that keeps the balance of the heat. There's four of these fixtures inside the unit, and there are four bulbs that are 90 watts. So this, all the wood, Home Depot, um, nice and thick so that it holds the heat in. I have a guide on this side so the plate doesn't slide off, and I can also lean on it the plate gets hot. So I'm going to put the plate back on. Sorry, I just hit the camera. Okay. So, plate's back on. What happens down here is there's a dimmer. And this is the box that the lights are attached to. It's a dimmer, also Home Depot. You can adjust the strength of the light bulbs to create uh, more heat in the light box. So what I would suggest, I try to keep it, right now I have the lid off, but I tried to keep it at 130. Hey, look at that, 130. So this is where you want to be. This is um, a flashpoint um, heat thermometer that you can buy online. So anyway, uh, moving along, there's different types of tools you can use for a monotype hotbox. And some of the tools are called scrapey tools and that's what they look like and they have different shapes they're rubber and you can pull wax with them so I'll show you how that works in a minute you can also use these I call them little claws but they are little fingers and they're also rubber and you can pull wax with these um, they're pretty good this same thing it's um, another way of being able to pull wax with these little rubber fingers. And then, of course, the house spatula that you probably have in the kitchen. Very common. Those are great. And you can also use different types of sponges. So here, these are the sponges that you can use. I keep them up here so they stay hot when I need them. So, uh, get a white rag. This one's been used a little bit. Um, an old t-shirt so that you could wipe the wax off. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put some color on the hot box right now. Let's see which one I want to use. These are the uh, hot sticks from Encausticos, which is fine. They work too. I just want to get some nice base color across here. Find a color that's a little bit stronger. Okay. Just so I can show you how the different tools make textures. This is from RNF. It's just a, a bigger piece of wax, covers a bigger area. So let's go through here like this. We can bring in a little bit yellow. Ultramarine, that's a nice color. You can work directly with your wax sticks too to create uh, texture and abstract, abstract shapes. So anyway, here we go. 
Uh, first off, what I'm going to do is I'm going to work with the um, scrappy tools. So what you can do is create, let's just say it's abstract and we're working with maybe underwater image. So you've got some plants, is how I perceive this. Um, just by moving the scrappy tool in different directions, you get different waves of color. So you're moving the color along the anodized aluminum. So you can see, you know, you, you get a shape like this if you were to turn it and pull, or different shapes if you were just going straight up. Different tools do different things. So here is a different tool, and I'm getting more of the wax being moved around and more of the white area visible to me. You can also use the little claws. That gives you um, kind of more of a line effect. Again, you can be creative, move it around, and still create some type of texture for whatever your piece is that you're working on. It could be, you know, more of a stringy, bushy type of plant, that if that's what you're picturing, underground or underwater. Not so much underground, it would be underwater. You can see. And again, the way that you move your scrappy tools is the way that you're going to get that three dimension effect in the wax. So here now we've created a very bushy little plant right here in the wax. Looks great. Works for what we wanted to do. Great. Then we can even go in to the other textures and complement them with a different tool. So let's see how the effect is different. So now we can move on to actually um, the spatula does a nice job. So what you want to do here is again move the spatula in different directions to make your shapes and do a little light pulling. So you're pulling the wax back and it's giving it a wave effect. Again, three dimensional. Nice feel to it. And you can create another image just from this tool. And it works really well on the hot box. And you know, you don't want to do too much because you're going to pull the wax and make it pool. And you don't want to have mud. So you can dab, you can pull. Okay, so you've got three different looks, actually four different looks so far. You can work with the sponge, and the sponge is going to give you a texture as you're moving the wax. So you can still create something abstract, something plant-like, but you are really working with um, something that's going to have a texture in it versus the other tools that are pulling away the wax. This is kind of putting the wax into a shape within the pull that you're giving, if that makes any sense. So again, you can do this. Whole different look, you know, according to which way you go. And then you can dab. Give it another different feel. You know, I love sponges. You can do so many things with them. It just has a, you know, more of a softer, fuzzy feeling to it. And again, that's just from going on the side of the sponge. If you were to do more of a swirl, you're going to get more of a ground cover. Or even if you were to use the circular sponge, you'll see it's 
kind of, I think more of a sky-like setting, I think, with the sponges that are round. You can work up here and create a very soft, fluffy texture with just that. Um, this sponge, too, this works really well if you want to do a ground coating. You're getting a mix of different textures. Kind of, it has a feel like dirt. It's, you know, very sporadic. You can go right over the other images and create more of a dirt effect at the bottom. Which is kind of cool. And then go in and just add some dots of texture through the dirt to give it a different look. See if other things are growing down there. It's cool. And um, again, you can use, you know, this item. This gives a different effect. More of the um, lines running through. Which is, you know, cool. It doesn't actually fit with these underground water plants, but it's okay. You get the idea. You can even go across and it's just going to create a very interesting abstract look of just lines going in many different directions and levels, you know, because now it's giving you different levels within the lines to see underneath. You can bigger lines, smaller lines, you know, still a very cool effect. And you can go back in with your scrapey tools if you choose and try to make this into something that works well with the rest of your image. Maybe, um, you know, more of a weedy area with just some sporadic plants. This is a different scrappy tool. So it's just giving half moon effects to the whole piece. And again, that works. Completely works. Go up, do the whole area with the half moon. You know, just to get the idea. Again, this is just to show you the different types of tools and how you can use them with your hot box and what the inside of the hot box looks like. So that's kind of cool. And we can still go along the ground bottom, you know, and we can pull up give it a little more dimension down here in front of the plants if we choose. It's, you know, it's a whole nother texture with just this one scrappy tool. So blend them through. You know, you, you can create something and then like something better after you've changed it. Work up this way. There we go. So anyway, these are the different textures you can see. Now what you want to do is you want to get a piece of rice paper and you want to pull up the image so it becomes a uh, monotype. So we're going to just lightly lay this down on the image and we're going to take a, usually a cleaner rag, but this one's fine for now. And you just want to blot the encaustic wax onto your rice paper. You don't want to rub because if you rub it's going to move and it's just going to make a big mess. So you can lightly go across it but keep your fingers and I know it's hot but try to hold down maybe with your fingernails the paper so it doesn't move because you can get carried away. You know the pieces it's looking good. Now that it's uh, a little more secure, I'm moving it a little more with the rag. I'm going to come over this way and pull up. Oh, see, made a move, but I think we're okay. So, you know, it's just to give you the idea anyway. It is hot, so I can see a little bubble over here of, of paint, but that's all right. This gives you a feel for what it's going to look like. Now I'm going to pull it up and uh, wipe down the board before I show you the image so I can get this off. 
This again is just wiped down with um, an old white t-shirt rag. You can get those also in like Walmart. Let me get my little sponges off of here. So the image actually turns out upside down. Really interesting. So it becomes a very cool looking image. Um, you can see the different textures between the types of tools we used, um, aside from the little blot. Now if you put more wax down, of course it's going to be more vivid. But just to give you a feeling for texture, this is really what this was about, and to see the hot box. So, uh, now you have an idea of how the tools work and how the hot box looks on the inside. Uh, hopefully you'll be able to build one for yourself and start to enjoy this and enjoy the world of encaustic monotypes. So thank you for visiting. Have a nice day.